step back in time to the early 1960s when a TV series emerged that would leave audiences in stitches. McHale's Navy brought the hilarious escapades of a group of misfit sailors led by Lieutenant Commander Quinton McHale. This classic show, with its simple humor and lovable characters, quickly became a favorite among viewers. Now, here's the hook as you journey through the episodes. Be prepared for a roller coaster of emotions. There are funny moments that will have you doubling over in laughter, shocking twists that'll leave you wide-eyed, and poignant scenes that tug at your heartstrings. So, keep those eyes glued to the screen, you won't want to miss a beat. Have you ever wondered about the behind-the-scenes stories or lesser-known facts that add layers to the show's charm? What personal anecdotes or inspirations do you hold from watching McHale's Navy? We're eager to hear your thoughts. And here's a question for you. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this classic TV series? Share your stories and memories in the comments below. Your fellow fans are waiting to connect over the shared joy this timeless show brings. So kick back, relax, and dive into the world of McHale's Navy. The laughter, surprises, and nostalgia await. Your stories make this journey even more special. We'd love to hear them. A viewer, aged 52, recalls fond memories of watching McHale's Navy as a child in the 70s. Despite acknowledging the show's cheesy humor, they consider it one of the best of its time, alongside classics like The Three Stooges, Hogan's Heroes, and The Little Rascals. The viewer expresses surprise at its seemingly low rating, attributing it to a potential lack of appreciation from younger generations unfamiliar with the 70s and 80s era. Another fan emphasizes the show's comedic value, describing it as funny and suggesting it should be brought back for family-friendly laughs. However, they express disappointment in the movie adaptation. In contrast, a more critical viewer acknowledges the general humor, but points out its heavy reliance on musical styles from the 40s and 50s. They compare it unfavorably to other contemporaneous shows like Hogan's Heroes, F Troop, and Get Smart, arguing that it doesn't hold up as well due to less compelling writing and conception. The reviewer suggests that the cast, apart from key members like Tim Conway, Joe Flynn, and Bob Hastings, is largely replaceable. They propose that the show could have achieved timeless classic status if these key cast members were the sole focus. In conclusion, opinions on the show vary, with some cherishing its nostalgic and silly humor, while others find fault in its dated elements and overall execution. Its specific strengths lie in the performances of key cast members, and differing views exist on its overall quality. Ernest Borgnine, a World War II veteran, served as a gunner's mate on the USS. Slife during the war, earning recognition as an honorary chief petty officer in 2004 for his continued support of the U.S. Navy. His 10-year naval tenure, spanning from 1935 to the war's end, laid the foundation for a remarkable career. Interestingly, the PT-73 prop boat's hull from McHale's Navy makes a cameo appearance in Columbo Fade In to Murder. Observant viewers can spot it on the back lot of a fictional television studio during a scene featuring William Shatner. In McHale's Navy episodes, when Lieutenant CMDR, Quinton McHale's crew engaged a Japanese sub, the outcome was predictable. Either the sub exploded on the surface after a torpedo hit or surfaced and exploded upon contact with a depth charge. The show's behind-the-scenes military connection, embodied by Borgnine, adds depth to its comedic charm. The PT-73's unexpected appearance in a different series, and the predictability of the sub-attacks in McHale's Navy hint at the lasting impact and unique quirks of this classic television series. Ernest Borgnine, aged 45 at the show's inception, anchored McHale's Navy with his season presence. Captain Binghampton, initially R.F. Binghampton, later adopted the name Wallace B. Binghampton, revealing an interesting evolution in the character's nomenclature. Willie Moss, adept as a radio man, wore an additional hat as a sonar man, efficiently alerting Lieutenant CMDR, Quinton McHale, to approaching Japanese submarines. His dual role showcased the resourcefulness within the crew. The simplicity of the show's humor belied its behind-the-scenes military connection, epitomized by Borgnine, a World War II veteran. He, recognized as an honorary chief petty officer in 2004, lent authenticity to the series. Notably, the PT-73 prop boat from the show made a cameo in Columbo Fade In to Murder, marking a unique cross-series appearance. Episodes featuring Japanese submarine encounters follow with a predictable pattern explosions either on the surface post-torpedo hits or upon surfacing, meeting depth charges. 
This predictability became a distinctive quirk, contributing to its charm. In summary, anchored by Borgnine's experience and the evolving character dynamics, the show unfolded its comedic charm against a military backdrop. The unexpected PT-73 cameo and the formulaic submarine encounters added layers to its appeal. In the show, Captain Wallace B. Binghampton had a pre-war job running a yacht club on Long Island Sound, and in other episodes, he was portrayed as the editor of a yachting magazine. At one point, he even sported a sweatshirt proudly displaying the San Diego Yacht Club. This added a touch of humor and a glimpse into Binghampton's varied pre-war occupations. During the fourth season, Ernest Borgnine took on a dual role in the series. Apart from his central character as McHale, he portrayed McHale's cousin Giuseppe in two distinct episodes, Giuseppe McHale and The Return of Giuseppe. Joe Flynn also showcased his versatility, playing both Captain Binghampton and Seaman Smoot in the episode alias Captain Binghampton. This dual casting added an interesting twist to the show's dynamics. Despite the popularity of the characters, it's notable that none of the officers, including McHale, ever wore a garrison cap throughout the series. This deviation from military uniform norms at the time is a subtle but consistent aspect of the show's portrayal of naval life. Ernest Borgnine's military background as a World War II veteran, specifically serving as a gunner's mate on the USS Slife, brought a unique authenticity to the show. His 10-year naval tenure, recognized with an honorary chief petty officer title in 2004, laid the groundwork for his remarkable career. The PT-73 prop boat from McHale's Navy made a surprising appearance in another series, Columbo Fade In to Murder, showcasing the lasting impact of the show beyond its original run. In the show's inception, Borgnine, aged 45, anchored McHale's Navy with his seasoned presence. Captain Binghampton's character underwent an interesting evolution in nomenclature, starting as R.F. Binghampton and later adopting the name Wallace B. Binghampton. The crew's resourcefulness was highlighted with Willie Moss juggling roles as a radio man and a sonar man showcasing the multifaceted skills within McHale's team. The predictability of Japanese submarine encounters either exploding on the surface post-torpedo hits or upon surfacing and meeting depth charges became a distinctive quirk contributing to the show's charm. In summary, anchored by Borgnine's experience and evolving character dynamics, McHale's Navy unfolded its comedic charm against a military backdrop. Tim Conway and Ernest Borgnine enjoyed a harmonious working relationship on and off the set as revealed by Conway in later interviews. Their camaraderie added a positive dynamic to the production. According to Ernest Borgnine, the PT boat featured in the series belonged to Howard Hughes and had an intriguing history as Hughes' photographic chase boat during the legendary solo flight of the Spruce Goose. This connection with Hughes adds an interesting layer to the show's behind-the-scenes elements. The DVD sets released from Tuning 7 onward included a notable extra, a reunion video featuring surviving cast members as of that year. The video, showcasing Ernest Borgnine, Tim Conway, Carl Ballantine, Edson Stroll, and Bob Hastings, offers fans a glimpse into the camaraderie that persisted among the cast. Unfortunately, Tim Conway passed away on May 14, 2019.